So You Can Play That Game is proudly sponsored by NiceGameShop.com, the place to go for rare and unusual Asian games. Good morning, I'm Michael and this is another Diaries of a Board Game YouTuber, this time for Monday the... I've forgotten the date. Uh, 14th of August. So, let's start with the usual kind of stuff, but then there's going to be something a little different with this video. Because I'm going to be doing some audio testing with hiding the microphone. And I'll explain more about that and I'll do all of that at the end of the video, but just so you're aware, for the moment, this is the normal setup with the microphone clipped, you know, kind of that level away. I, I kind of judge it just above my nipple height, um, and that's how I decide where to place it and try and keep it level and the same. Um, and on the outside of the clothing, and I'll talk more about that later. That's how it's being done for the majority of the video. So. Uh, this week we've had eight videos. Uh, first was a review of NIMBY. So this was a little light strategy game about moving around a hive in order to collect pollen from cards that gains you points. It's all about trying to judge how fast you move around and slow yourself down, speed yourself up, etc. Um, so if you want to find out more, do take a look at that. We also had three videos for Oh My Goods, which is this tiny little box game here. Um, I think this is a lovely game. I've seen a few comments saying really it's broken. I don't think I agree with that. I've played it a lot of times and I haven't found that to be the case. Um, but I've done a review how to play and play through on that so you can take a look see how all that works. Then finally I haven't got the game out because frankly it's huge and I can't bother to get it out of the box. <laughs> and that is Massive Darkness. Um, so I did four videos for Massive Darkness. We had how to play, play through, a short review and a review. So there's a few things I got slightly wrong in places. Um, just the normal, it happens when you're recording, you make small errors. So can't really help that too much. But yeah, otherwise pretty happy with those. Um, ignore the kitty who's just jumped on the table. <laughs> Get off frog, go. There we go. Um, yeah, so let's move on to the figures. We're at, uh, well, 19 and three quarter months now. We're just a week away, really, from three, uh, from 20 months. And Facebook, we have 2,932 likes, so not a big change, not really any change at all. Same with Twitter. We're at 10,155 followers, so again, not really any change. Now, this week leading up to Gen Con, all the focus is Gen Con, Gen Con, Gen Con, for the majority of the hobby anyway. So, trying to get noticed or things happening, it is a very difficult time, and it's going to be even worse this coming week, because, you know, it is Gen Con. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm not too upset with that. Um, YouTube, however, this is the interesting thing. Having said, hard to get noticed, things, etc. YouTube subs. 4,627. That's a really big increase. That's the sort of level increase I expect to see when we're doing giveaways, and there was no giveaway happening. So stay tuned for the analytics on that. Uh, views, 274,653. Now, if you're a regular viewer, you'll know my current target on views a week is 4,000, and I did fall short on that last week. But, you know, I was close enough to count it as a win. This week, doubled! Woohoo! Um, yeah, absolutely fantastic result this week. I, I wish, you know, every week could see that sort of level of increase. Um, yeah, it's been a really, really fantastic week. And as we move into the analytics, I can explain why. But first, I just want to note that last week I commented on the fact that view duration was up to, I think it was 6 minutes 40. It's nearly at 7 minutes this week. So it's kept up there and it's doing really well. I'm really pleased with this. Um, so I've had more views and the people who have been watching have been watching for longer. This is fantastic. Um, I, wish, I wish I was this excited and this happy every week, but you know, it, if it happened every week, it wouldn't be exciting. And so yeah, it's really good to see 
um, have such a good week. And yeah, uh, thank you to everyone who has watched. So what is causing this? Well, the top 10 video has still been the most viewed video this week. It's still getting huge numbers of views. Top 10s are a big deal. I really should do more. And I keep saying that and I keep not doing them. Part of it is if I'm going to do a top 10, I want to do it as well as I did the last one. Like my top 10 of 2016, I was a bit, yeah, I'm not, I'm not completely happy with this because some of the games, I didn't have the games there in front of me because I'd moved them on. You know, it wasn't that they were bad games, but I just wasn't going to play them. I moved them on. I gave them away as competitions. I probably would have kept them if I hadn't been giving them away. Probably. Um, but... I didn't have those games there and for this one I had all the games there and when I look at possibility of doing top 10 lists I'm like I keep quite a small games collection I've got a small house I can't I don't have the room to keep them all and I don't really feel the need to keep uh, you know hundreds of games I try and keep my collection around 50 games at the moment it is about 100 but <laughs> I'm not doing so well, um, but I do try. I try and keep it down, and um, that means that even if I like games, I don't necessarily have them because I play them at other people's. I play them at cafes. I play them at conventions, etc. And like I was thinking about, oh well, what if I did, you know, a top ten race games? And I thought, well, I'd like Flam Rouge to be in there. I really liked Flam Rouge. I wasn't sure about how much replay value it has, but it's definitely a unique fun race game that would deserve to be in there but I don't own it and I wouldn't be able to do justice to it so yeah anyway I'm rambling on so that's kind of why I haven't done more top tens um anyone watching I suggest doing top tens people love them uh so yeah what else well massive darkness has been a huge hit absolutely huge hit um the combined four videos have had well over double the views of the rest of the videos on the channel even including the top 10 it, they have done fantastically well i'm really pleased with how well they've done and the reason they've done so well it is a big name game i'm the first that's it that's all it comes down to i'd like to think there is an element of i've done good videos and i have worked hard to try and produce very good quality videos in a short time frame I played the game huge numbers of times, like over 20 times. I spent a lot of hours on the videos. I just spent a lot of extra time this week working on that to get it out in a shorter time frame and just pushed and pushed and pushed to do it, but without skimping on the quality. And that's what I really hope I've done. And I think, you know, it's paid off. It just shows being first matters. And it's why it's a real shame that it's so hard for smaller content creators such as myself to ever be first with games because everyone sends them to the dice tower for free months before I'm able to get hold of them and buy them and it means I'm spending the money the dice tower don't and yet I'm gonna have nowhere near the views and I know that even with the massive darkness dice tower when they do their video gonna knock my videos out of the water not viewed at all basically comparatively but you know my average views on videos currently because of all the dislikes i'm getting and stuff is around 50 views 50 to 100 on average within the first two weeks massive darkness my review of massive darkness is over a thousand my how to play is over 800 i think you know those are huge figures and it's purely because I am the first one there. It's not because those are everyone wanted those videos and they wanted them from me. It's just they wanted those videos. They didn't care who they came from. And those are factors outside of my control. Being able to, you know, get the games ahead of time, be the first is something I can't control and yet it's something that makes a huge difference to the channel and its growth hence the huge increase in subs as well as on views people have viewed these videos and then subbed you know they have gone and watched and gone wow this guy's doing good content 
how have I never heard of him? How have I never seen him? And it's not that I'm not out there, that I'm not publishing everything to Board Game Geek, pushing on Twitter and Facebook and going, look, look, I'm here, look at me. But that isn't enough to get people to actually notice you. And in many ways, it just annoys people. A lot of people on social media, I, I've, you know, I've talked to people, will not click on links in social media. If someone links a video, they just ignore it. They don't even look to see who it's by. It's just ignore. And so getting noticed is hard. And this just shows that if you can get people to watch, it really makes a difference. So it's that initial getting people to watch. Being first is one way. Other ways, I've really not found them yet. I mean, some people just produce such unique, original, amusing content that that does it and people share it. That's not my style. My, I'm, 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 you know, I know I'm not that and I accept it. I am trying to be informative and help people make decisions and hopefully not just be so dry it makes them want to slit their own throats. Anyway, um, that's enough rambling on that matter, I think. Let's talk now about new arrivals. Now, I've only actually got one written down, which is Zubal, uh, which is a new dexterity game from Osprey Games coming out later this month, I think. I think it's coming out... I think it's coming out at Gen Con, actually, so it'll be coming out next week. This just light dexterity game, flicking, uh, about animals playing a sport. Uh, there's not really a whole lot to it, um, but nice artwork and stuff. So, uh, yeah, Zubal. And not written down is Rhino Hero Super Battle, which I ordered from Germany last week. It arrived this morning after I'd done my notes, um, literally sat trying to get breakfast, this arrived. And yeah, so I'm really excited and looking forward to playing that. And I'm not aware, there's been a lot of convention video for this, but I'm not aware of any like reviews and stuff like that out yet. So this might be another chance for me to be first on something. And if I can do that on the back of being first on Massive Darkness, that'll make people go, oh, he's the guy who did the Massive Darkness video I saw. Oh yeah, I will subscribe. So yeah, I'm going to be playing this a lot in the next few days. And I'm going to try and get the videos done as fast as I can. But again, I don't want to skimp on quality. I don't want to just rush and go, yeah, I'm the first. But the videos be so poor and so bad that no one wants to watch them. You know, I put a lot of effort into my videos and I want to keep that. I don't want to sacrifice that and then have people notice me, but notice me in a bad way. Um, so anyway, yep, that's the new arrivals. Then what are we going to have this week? Well, I did work really hard on Massive Darkness last week, but I am hoping to get Isle of Sky videos done. Um, most of the recording's done. I need to do most of the editing. Well, I need to do all the editing and finish off a bit of the recording. Um, but I hope to have a full series of videos on Isle of Sky. Um, I seem to be doing a bit of a Alexander Fister um, thing at the moment because I covered a lot of his games recently. It was Great Western Trail, then Oh My Goods, then Isle of Sky. Uh, it's a pure coincidence. I was Flame Rouge one of his? No, well, I don't think it was. Uh, anyway, yeah, um, this, you know, it's pure coincidence. This I played at the Expo this year, this last year, um, and they just happened to be, yeah, uh, every time I play one of his games, I like them. So um, let's now have a look at testing audio. So how this all came about is at the weekend, I was chatting with Paul Grogan from Gaming Rules, and um, during this conversation, it came up, why don't I hide my microphone? Why do I have it visible? Um, I think it was because we were talking about thumbnails, maybe? I can't remember exactly. But anyway, it came up, and I explained that, oh, I had tried hiding it. I tried, like, taping it to the inside of my clothes using masking tape, and I found that it was really muffled, and that there was a lot of rustling noises and stuff from, like, the clothes and the tape, I guess. And he gave me a few suggestions. He said, well, I hide mine. What I found is first, take off the foam bit on the end. You don't need that. That'll help reduce the muffling. With regards to help reduce the um, rustling, use um, duct tape, you know, thick fabric tape, duct tape. Just a little bit of that to tape all the wires and everything closely, tightly to the clothing, and that'll do the job. 
So uh, let's see how that sounds. So this is with normal audio setting. It's taped so that it's about there, so about the same place as I would normally clip it. <coughs> and sorry, um, and yeah, so this is inside the clothes, normal volume, kind of moving around as if we're doing components, have a drink. Um, then we'll see kind of when it comes to looking at it, how that actually comes out. What I do think um, would be good to try, I don't know why I was looking down there, <laughs> what I think would be good to try is because I think it will be more muffled, um, I'd like to try and play around with volume a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the input audio and then uh, come back around and we'll see how we're doing with that. So at the moment this is at, according to my camera, 3.5 bars on audio. So I think what we're going to try and do is increase it one bar to 4.5 and let's see how that then sounds in comparison. Um, and yeah, maybe this will be the future, hidden away so that you don't see it. I was actually wrong, it was at 3, not 4, um, not 3.5, so I've increased it to 4. Um, I don't remember putting it down to 3.5. Sorry, putting it down from 3.5 to 3. So I wonder when I did that. Um, I, t I tend not to play around that side of it too much because I use the same setup all the time, so I don't need to. So I must have turned it down at some point and I just I have no recollection of when. Um, interesting. So hopefully this is all coming out good and clear. Um, you've hopefully found it interesting and something new or different for you to try. And yeah, uh, that's a rather probably long diaries, but hopefully an entertaining one. I do thank you as always for watching and do the whole subscribing, etc. Uh, yeah, bye for now.